At Staples Business Advantage, our experts can help you find furniture that fits any design and budget, while AI can recommend products based on preferences, generate 3D models for visualization, and optimize space planning for office furniture. Take advantage of our team's eye for style and design. And my eye for, wait, I have no eyes. Only algorithms. At Staples Business Advantage, furnishing your office is easy. And with the best warranty in the business, we're committed to you now and down the road. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human. I never did anything to harm my daughter or my granddaughter. The test is about to begin. Please remain still. Casey Anthony's parents, the lie detector test. Watch now only on A&E and watch next day on the A&E app. For exclusive podcasts and more, sign up at patreon.com slash partners in crime media. I'm Rebecca Lavoie, and this is Crime Writers On. Crime Writers On is the original true crime review podcast that digs into true crime, pop culture, other podcasts, And on this episode, for decades, the Boy Scouts kept confidential records of sexual predators within their ranks. But the organization did almost nothing to prevent the largest sex abuse case in history. We'll discuss the Netflix documentary, Scouts Honor, the Secret Files of the Boy Scouts of America. Joining me to get that done and more is true crime author, TV journalist, and host of the These Are Their Stories podcast, my husband and love of my life, Kevin Flynn. Hey, Kevin. Hello, Rebecca. Also with us is private investigator, certified pet detective, resident cat lady, and author of the Piper Green series of Cozy Mysteries, Laura Bricker. Hey, Laura. Hey, Rebecca. And finally, a resident doubting Thomas, the author of the City Trilogy of Novels, host of Strange Arrivals podcast, and our Patreon Deep Dive Book Club podcast host, Toby Ball. Hi, Toby. Hello, Rebecca. Okay, so Kevin. Yes. This is Thursday's podcast. It is. What is coming up on Monday's show? On Monday, we're going to be talking about the new podcast, Exposed, Cover Up at Columbia University. I believe that is hosted by Laura Beal, is it not? I haven't listened yet, but I believe so, right? Yes. Yes, I know that. uh, From the Dr. Death series. Yes. The only reason I know that, by the way? Yeah. Because she emailed to tell us about the podcast. (laughs) And apparently you'd already booked it, right? Like you'd already yeah, it was already for- on my. It was already on the schedule, but uh, I'm excited to listen to that one because lots of people have been telling us we should, and every time that happens, I'm always like, "Oh, we should probably listen." She's writing in because she wants redemption from Crime Writers on. Why? How did do we do something to her? I think the last Doctor Death we were, or the last thing she the was sec- on. Is that the, last the one thing that, we didn't love? that place in Switzerland? And was it that? Yeah, that Doctor like Doctor and the Bad Batch isn't oh, she also Bad Batch maybe yes I forget she's the one with all the hands I love the, Laura yeah. though she's really nice I've never had a problem with her yeah yeah she's she's really really lovely person alright so Kevin um, before we start the program is there anything that you would like to plug this week yeah I just want to let you know that uh, next week is my annual Walk a Mile in Her Shoes fundraiser you've been hearing me talk about this I will put on a pair of high heel shoes and I will walk with a bunch of other people to raise money for the Crisis Center of Central New Hampshire and uh, they provide emergency services for women and families in need who are having crisis uh, uh, crises 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 uh you know intimate partner violence things of this nature and it's a great cause folks if you want to uh, donate and sponsor my walk which I'll be streaming live on Facebook, uh, you can do so by going to crimewriterson.com. There's a link right there. Throw a little money our way. I, last year I was the number one fundraiser. Thanks to you. Thanks to you guys. Yes. I just don't want to come in second place again. Hmm. Not again, but I just don't want you to come, have second come in second place. I have before. to, yes. You know, you I didn't just like it. Yeah, I just want to impress everybody again there that we have we have listeners from all around the world who are uh, willing to support us financially and, and even if it's a small way, if it's five bucks, that's fine. Some people are doing up to $100, loving all of it, goes to a great cause. And you get to see me walking in high heel shoes again. Yes. I'll just I say there's one other man there that is very competitive that Kevin wants to beat. Yes. <laughs> he may or may not wear a uniform. Yes, Kevin wants to beat him again. He always beats you. Last year you beat him. And you would like to beat him again. That guy has like a set of like kinky boots boots yes. that are just... Oh. Yeah, I mean, they're like patent leather and they go up to his thigh and he like moves fantastic in them. Yes. 
It might be because he has a job that requires physical fitness as one of the requirements. Yeah, but balance. And you Agility. do not. Agility, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm balancing this microphone on my chin. Come on. Yes, yes. I'll say at the Crisis Center Central New Hampshire, just to expand upon it, it's one of those organizations where if someone needs to leave because they're experiencing domestic partner violence, they provide a place to go. They also provide counseling services. They provide uh, items for families. They do so much work. And if there's an organization like this in your community that you'd like to help out, I encourage you to seek them out and provide whatever help you can. Yeah. Okay, so Kevin, we have a really interesting documentary to talk about. Should we just get down to it? Yeah, why don't you go lead off? All right, let's lead off with that first clip right now. This is a human rights movement we're talking about today, a civil rights movement for children against one of the biggest offenders in the world, the Boy Scouts of America. Though thought of as a leading youth group for skills and character building, the Boy Scouts often attracted adults who preyed on children. For decades, the national headquarters cataloged these incidents in confidential files, but publicly denied there was a problem. They wanted you to project their image of Market safety. Market this image of safety. That's which, not what you were seeing, though. Uh, that's totally not what I'm seeing. It wasn't until a former scout sued that the files were disclosed, revealing leaders knew about but never acted on hundreds and hundreds of cases of abuse. And even today, after a multi-billion dollar settlement with victims, Whistleblowers say the Boy Scouts are failing in their mission to protect its members. I'm not going to sit here and be quiet while I know the kids are still at risk of being sexually abused in scouting. The Netflix documentary Scouts Honor, the secret files of the Boy Scouts of America, looks into the cover-up behind the largest sex abuse case in history. Survivors, journalists, and insiders recount what happened when the organization that urged young men to be honest and trustworthy ignored its own ideals in favor of self-preservation. Spoiler alert, we are going to be talking about plot points from Scout's Honor, so if you want to remain spoiler-free, go to the estimated time code in our show notes for our thumbs-up or thumbs-down reviews. Additional note, I am the host of Netflix's You Can't Make This Up podcast, and we covered Scouts Honor. However, that has not affected my review. So, Toby, let's talk about the Boy Scouts. What are they all about in your mind? So, you know, the Boy Scouts, I think more than most organizations, like there's definitely like a picture you have in your mind of the Boy Scout in their uniform and Eagle Scouts and helping old ladies across the street and learning about camping and going on camping trips. Learning to tie a square knot. All this stuff, right? So it's like, it's sort of like non-sports stuff for boys. And so that's obviously like a brand and an image that they have fostered for like, I don't even know how long it's been around, but for well over a hundred years, it also seems in some ways like a, a piece of the past, maybe. But I, I think what this documentary does pretty well is showing that it's not just the image they have of the public, but it's their self image and the way that they kind of buy into this sort of idealized version of themselves and aren't willing to sort of confront the realities of it's not like it could only happen with the Boy Scouts, but the Boy Scouts didn't take the necessary steps, I think, in large part because of their self-image of being this sort of virtuous place for boys. I mean, it's ubiquitous. Boy Scouts, you say Boy Scouts to people and everybody knows what you're talking about. There's no confusion. Hmm. You know, it's interesting. I mean, Laura, we'll talk about, I mean, there's obviously parallels to the Catholic Church, you know, sex abuse cases. I just kept thinking when I was watching this about parallels to private schools and, you know, prep schools where, you know, one of the things that gets pointed out here is that Boy Scout troop leaders, you know, anyone can be a troop leader, right? And the Boy Scouts are image, 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 and they have files that they are keeping for some reason. <laughs> and I keep thinking about the, the reason that I have a parallel to prep schools is because, you know, private schools, teachers don't have to be certified. They don't have to go through the same sorts of checks or anything. And I mean, maybe some schools have those processes, but others don't. And it is, again, all about image. It's all about building character. It's all about you send your kids here and they'll come out as sort of like different kinds of people. And it is very much about you guys get to sleep here and your parents don't. <laughs> kind of situation. And Laura, that's what struck me with the Boy Scout thing is that it is uniquely suited for abuse because the kids are away sleeping at camps and at, you know, at out activities with adults who have not been vetted. And that makes it a unique environment um, set up for abuse. 
Yeah. And I will say, I'd like to kind of put this sort of out there that, you know, my son was in Scouts for quite a while from Cub Scouts up through Boy Scouts. But when he was in Scouts, this had all come out and their protocols were so strict that like he could not even ride to a camping trip in a car with a scout leader that was not his parent if there were not other children there. Like it was so strict that... Set by who though? Because that was your... I'll tell you, that's not what it's like in in every troop though. It's a national... It's that they have new guidelines. And I know that my ex-husband, um, when he was going to be chaperoning, he had to go through all sorts of training. Um, and it was a pain. It was, it was not inconsequential, the amount of training he had to go to even go on a camping trip as a chaperone. So after this, there are a lot of protocols in place and there are a lot of safety measures in place. The way it was explained to me locally was this was like coming down from national. These were new protocols that were put in place because of everything that had happened. But yes, I agree with you, Rebecca. Prior to that, it sounds like a nightmare in a way, having people being put in this position where, you know, they are out there with children, you know, unsupervised. Did you get the sense though, Kevin, that it really is just like kind of willy nilly, depending on where you are, who you are, like there isn't a lot of regulation going on and they had these records and, and didn't do anything with them. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, to Laura's point here, Michael Johnson, who was the guy uh, that was hired to sort of run the safety says that, you know, there's lip service to this, but they're not really doing the things that they're supposed to be doing. They're not even going to do like a background check. Yeah. Like I needed that to be an umpire and I'm not like anywhere near a kid. Right. Um, well, I guess I'm near the catcher, but that just, yeah. that's just, you know, you're never alone. I'm with never, a no, God, no. <laughs> you're, but, you're in front of teams, coaches, team. parents, the parents exactly. behave way worse than you, you ever do. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> they do. But the idea, I'm, I'm still stuck on the idea just basically of why the scouts were compiling these records if to not act on them because if their idea is like we're going to have these files so that we can make the place safer they never acted on that but if they're going to be like well we want to cover this up why are you taking these notes and creating an alphabetized system showing all the ways that you're failing i just didn't get why you know the catholic church did the same freaking thing i don't know if you ever like worked at a a grocery store or a place where they're like you know by the register they would put up like a little thing like don't accept checks you know anymore from these people and i wonder if it started you know they thought well we're going to keep a list of the 30 people who uh you know are bad scout masters and we'll let them know we'll let people know and then they just snowballed and there was too many to do anything about i have no idea i mean that's like the only thing i could possibly think of why you would just like take the names and then not do anything with it i mean my assumption was that just in a a place that's got to have a decent sized bureaucracy there was probably somebody who thought it was a good idea to collect all this stuff but then the person who was supposed to sort of put anything into action was like, fuck, no, we're not doing this. So it it wouldn't surprise me if it was just two people with different ideas about what was going on or two departments, because that happens. That feels like that happens all the time. And with something as explosive as this, like I just, when they, when they talk to the general counsel, you know, I mean, that guy just seems like in some ways I felt bad for him. I'm like, this is a freaking no win situation for you like you're just getting nailed for all the stuff that's happened before but his response is exactly the kind of response of a guy who's not going to act on a uh you know file cabinet full of sex abuse cases i mean it, it is just sort of you know this institutional you can't tar us all this is before my time you know wasn't responsible i mean it just it was all this sort of not owning up to things and trying to move forward without taking too much heat. I would tell you that we're a microcosm of our entire society. If we had a problem, our society had a problem, many other institutions had the problem, we just happen to be the one with the deep pocket right now and the one that's willing to make the social commitment to try to make it right and to try to apologize, to try to do everything we can to keep kids safe, to try to compensate for these victims but then to continue the mission. But can we talk about the files? I mean, the perversion files, that was actually the name of those files and that they had them going back more than a hundred years. That's the part that is kind of astounding that 
it was so prolonged at the core. And and that makes me sad because like I said, I have family members that were in scouts that are now in their, you know, 60s that have had very positive experiences. And and it's sad that something that at its heart could have been about teaching about the outdoors and camping and like, you know, being a good citizen has this hundred plus year history of covering things up and putting it in files like that. To me, that's just very sad. Well, in the modern case, there's more than 82,000 victims in the contemporary case. That's what makes it the largest. And by the way, that's just people who have come forward and talked about it, right? So we know there are many, 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 many more victims than these 82,000. So ultimately, the Boy Scouts hire this guy, Michael Johnson, as their youth protection, you know, youth safety officer. And he's former law enforcement. And in my opinion, um, and this I think often happens where institutions in an effort to protect themselves hire somebody sort of as a... um, like a figurehead, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, we've hired this person. We've hired this ombudsman or we've hired this in some like corporations. It's like our chief diversity officer. We've hired a person to solve a problem that we know we have who they don't actually think is going to do anything, but because they have the job, Mm -hmm. they think having the job is, is enough, right? They didn't get what they paid for in, in Michael Johnson, right, Toby? Yeah. I mean, he, he shows up and, uh, He's like, what, what are we going to do about this problem? And that's his career. He knows what you're supposed to do and goes about looking into things and finds that not only are people not taking it seriously and deluding themselves or whatever, but I think he talks a couple times about the guy who's in charge of the Boy Scouts who actually has his name put on a uh, publication about child safety in the Boy Scouts. And he didn't actually even read it. It was just like he had some lackey who was on this committee. Um, So he doesn't even really know what's in it. So he's there for a while. And then he finally gets so frustrated that he becomes a whistleblower, right? He leaves and becomes a whistleblower and uh, is among the people. Although I guess we'll talk about the other case later that really brings it all down, but who exposes what's going on. And, And his point is is that it's it's like inherently a high risk organization just when you're when you're giving adults that kind of access to kids especially in overnight situations like you've just got to think of that as being high risk even if it's only like a certain percentage of the time but they didn't approach safety that way right they didn't consider it high risk but what were they telling you to say oh that boy scouts of america is safe the boy scouts of america's gold standard the boy scouts of america has a rigorous application of screening process, that the Boy Scouts of America conducts criminal background checks of all of its leaders. Uh, you know, that the youth protection program is is better and by far than any other uh, youth servant organization program. Yeah, I, I don't know if you know, I mean, there's the Scout Oath, which starts off, on my honor, I will do my best. And they obviously did not live up to those ideals. And then there's also the Scout uh, motto, which is be prepared. So you always have to be prepared for me transitioning into the business section. Oh, Kevin, we're, we were not prepared for that, but I guess we should have been. Should have been. Yeah. I'm here sitting here. I'm tying knots. Yeah. I'm doing totem chip, which is like you take the knife and you like whittle. Yeah. Right. I did. did I went to summer camp. God, this Scott, is did so, I'm sorry. This is all so old fashioned. I can't. I you can't. can't. I can't. We'll talk about that after the business section. Go ahead. Okay, so when I say be prepared, be prepared to watch us live on Patreon uh, talking about only murders in the building on October 3rd. We want you to watch the season finale on Hulu and then join us live as we give our reviews for a uh, for a quick turnaround on uh, an excellent, hopefully be an excellent episode, great discussion about one of our favorite uh, TV shows. Does yep. it? Will we will we guess who the killer or killers are, and will we be satisfied with the way it ends up? Join us uh, there. You can sign up for Patreon, of course, by going to patreon.com slash partners in crime media. You can get episodes of crime writers on early and ad free you also get exclusive podcasts more than 400 of them behind the paywall there and you get well the crime writers on after show you get married with podcasts where rebecca and i dish out advice like to the uh the woman who uh who's, whose kid kept biting everybody at daycare i love that what question to do about she's afraid that. he's gonna be marked forever 
No. No, it's the kid's He's a baby. going to be scarred, yeah. He's a baby. Yeah, Laura Bricker has this great episode called What a Dump, because some dog, <laughs> some giant dog, some mystery dog is pooping all over. It's like Clifford the Big Red Dog is pooping all over. Yeah. Exeter. Clifford's Big Brown Dookie is what... Yeah. Marmaduke. Yeah. <laughs> so she's looking at that. And of course, we have Toby Ball's Deep Dive Book Club. The latest book is called Beneath a Ruthless Sun. And it's written by Gilbert King, who's the uh, investigator behind Bone Valley. Mm. But, so we got Bone and Dookie all in the same business section. It's really, we're really mature here. Yeah. Yeah. We really are. We get, we get that a lot, by the way, how mature we are. <laughs> Yeah, I know you are, but what am I? Yeah. I also want to let you know that if you're looking for other things to listen to, we have These Are Their Stories, the Law & Order podcast. This week, we're talking about a classic episode of SVU. This is the one. Chris, this is the one where we see Olivia come out of uh, Brian Cassidy's bedroom. You're like, oh, apparently they've been fucking. Wearing his shirt. They've been fucking. Yes. Um, She, She needed that D. Maybe the D. Yeah. Absolutely. And this is a case where apparently like both Amaro and Cassidy while they're undercover, they're going under the covers yes. with the women while they're undercover. Yes. Have a listen. You're accused of raping a sex slave, so you dragged me through the mud. It was my lawyer's call. I didn't rape anybody. Did you? Not even close. I, Cynthia and I, that was a relationship. Yeah, like me and Carissa, Mr. Holier than now. Did Carissa know you were undercover? Did Cynthia? And so, Kevin, before we end the business section, do we have any Patreon patron saints of the week this week? Our Patreon patron saints are Michaela Mayucci. And Hillary Cashmer, bless you. Bless you, Michaela and Hillary. Thank you so much for being patrons. Thank you for everybody who supports us on Patreon. I would like recommend that you maybe try out our Patreon for a couple of months because there's some good stuff back there. You but get it for if, seven days for free if you want. Yeah, but yeah. even if you don't support us there, we really appreciate listening to our dumb business section anyway because, you know. We appreciate you that way. All right, Kevin, does that end the business section? I don't know. You want to talk about dog dookie anymore? No. All right. Well, then, thus ends the business section. I'm going to go and pay that music out right now. At Staples Business Advantage, our experts can help you find furniture that fits any design and budget, while AI can recommend products based on preferences, generate 3D models for visualization, and optimize space planning for office furniture. Take advantage of our team's eye for style and design. And my eye for... Wait, I have no eyes, only algorithms. Let Staples Business Advantage use today's latest innovations plus our team's experience to make furnishing an office space easier for you. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human. I never did anything to harm my daughter or my granddaughter. The test is about to begin. Please remain still. Casey Anthony's parents, the lie detector test. Watch now only on A&E and watch next day on the A&E app. Okay, so Laura, there is a component of this that does cross over, of course, with the church. There's a conversation here that I don't think is insignificant about, uh, you know, Mormon influence on the Boy Scouts and and how a lot of Boy Scout meetings do take place in church basements. So there is not not a religious affiliation with the Boy Scouts. Oh, oh, totally. And I will say, again, going back to uh, my own family's scouting experience, there are two scout troops in town. One is affiliated with the Catholic Church and one is affiliated with, I feel like they were in the basement of the Jehovah Witness Church. Ooh, um, it was like the Jets and the Sharks. I know. So it was like, <laughs> which troop are you going to go to? The Catholics or the Jehovah Witness one? But so they they always had that, you know, sort of behind, like, okay. And it wasn't any sort of overt religion sort of brought out. But yeah, there was that affiliation. And I was like, of course the Mormons are involved in this. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Was it the Mormons that were more upset about gay troop leaders? It didn't didn't have an influence. Yes. I mean, absolutely they were. Absolutely they were. More upset about that than children being molested. So uh, go figure. Um, But we'll get rid of these gay leaders and then um, then we will be morally straight and clean. Like that was the language that was used. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me right now really i'm just gonna throw something out there and you may all disagree with me i think a lot of the norms of the boy scouts and everything that they represent are so freaking old-fashioned and weird to me the whole idea that boyhood and masculinity is shaped by things like going in the wilderness tying knots being a man in a certain way of course it's homophobic 
Of course, it's it's like tied to all of these things that are rife for abuse. It is just like the Catholic Church, where it's like, you have to be a certain way. You can't sin. You have to be pure because that's the only thing that makes you a good kind of person. The Boy Scouts is very similar in its view of masculinity, where like boys have to be a certain way to be a boy. Like that's just like, it's like taking you back to like the 1930s and 40s and 50s. It's like reading an Ernest Hemingway book where it's like the code of honor like you you know you have to do these certain things it's like you're returning from war and you have to have all these skills it just to me feels you know very very stuck in a time and place and a mindset that is very very rife for possibilities of of like the kind of judgment that of course would be the same kind of place that would be like a, a hunting ground for predators. That's what it's always like. It's always like the places that say they're the purest and the best and the most old fashioned where the most predation happens. Like we hear about it over and over and over again. And I just, it's like, how do we not think that this is going to happen here? I don't know. That's just, that's my take on it. Yeah, yeah. And then every once in a while in this, I mean, I, I agree. And part of, you know, as a parent, I liked, I was like, oh, great. My kid doesn't have to be on cell phones for the whole weekend. Yes. Like that was like, I was so ecstatic. But, you know, within the people that are turning a blind eye, the perversion files and all this stuff, every once in a while, there's somebody that's doing the right thing. Like, you know, we have the doctor that gets a disclosure in New Orleans, reports it to I want to know, is this Harry Connick's father? It Harry is. Connick? Yeah, it is. Yeah. The it is. DA? Yep. Yes. Yeah, that's him. Yep. And he does something. So I'm like, okay, so every once in a while you hear somebody, you know, trying to bring some accountability to the situation. So when he yeah. hears about that the Boy Scouts are running a pedophile ring in New Orleans, he he decides he's going to do something. I mean, it's <laughs> it's just so. <laughs> Had to uh, be a whole ring. Yeah. Couldn't it's ignore just so that. Extreme. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think, though, if you like say, well, it was the church's influence that they conflated homosexuality with pedophilia. I think it lets the organization off a little too easy because I think it was probably something inside. Laura, you you quote you actually quoted part again of the the scout oath where you say, I'll I'll keep myself physically strong, mentally awake and morally straight. And so whatever that means, that's code for no gays and the gays are bad and that. Uh, you know, this is at a time where like being gay was illegal and you certainly wouldn't want any homosexuals to be teachers. And that's just so old fashioned and out of date. And we know that's absolutely what incorrect. are the two things before that? Physically strong, physically strong, but physically mentally strong. Awake. What the actual fuck? Like, what is that? That's like saying like only sporty kids are a good kid. That's fucking terrible. Yeah. But it just, you know, <laughs> the implication that, you know, being morally straight means that if you're gay, you can't. You know, you're immoral. Yeah. Um, and, but I, and I will say, like, I can certainly see today's Supreme Court saying this, but I was really surprised that yesterday's Supreme Court gave a private organization like the Scouts the ability to ignore the civil rights of gay people, just like they would for a church, like a church says, I want a religious exemption. They gave this private group essentially what is a religious exemption or a moral exemption yeah. and allow them to violate the civil rights of, of, of gay Scouts and gay Scout leaders is just like man well yeah. you know you, you should be paying two billion dollars but kevin people. yeah how surprised were you to hear about the guy who wrote the policy on care for the boy scouts organization oh, back douglas, in the day, smith. douglas smith yeah yeah he was convicted of child pornography yeah and you know this is really i think it says really more about public perception and attitudes about these issues than it does about the boy scouts themselves that the guy that you know wrote the safety manual had child pornography it's because it's a giant red flag like if an archbishop being a sexual predator you go oh man that church blah 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 the idea that systemic abuse in the scouts didn't resonate with the public after that incident i think is really puzzling i mean i think it just goes to show like it's just him it couldn't be all the boy scouts because they're all american and pure and we all got merit badges when we were in it um you know i just i, I found that surprising I have a question, and Toby, this is something that I just, it wasn't addressed in the documentary, and it's not a failing of the documentary, but I'm curious about it. So the Catholic Church, like, owns a tremendous amount of property and also has a lot of, like, you know, religious influence and, like, you know, historic influence. You know, the Mormon Church, we know, is one of the largest property owners in the United States of America, and they have a lot of cultural influence. Uh, I'm talking about, you know, 
organizations that, you know, we've looked at before on the podcast, other documentaries about them where like abuse has happened, you know, Scientology, same thing. Obviously, they're much smaller than they pretend they are, but they have a lot of money. MLMs would be another one. Like there's a business like motivation there. But the Boy Scouts are a very decentralized organization, right? They probably have a headquarters. They get dues, you know, to run the troops and stuff. Like, what is the incentive for self-protection, you think? Because it's like, they're just a brand, you know? <laughs> it's not like they have a church in every town <laughs> in America, like a, th- like a building, you know what I mean? That, that's, that's the thing that's like confusing to me because it would seem to me like they'd be very incentivized to keep their brand like right. Yeah, I, I guess it cuts two ways. One of which is it's got to just be super, super difficult to have a sense of what's going on in all these places because it's so decentralized and there's so many troops. But I think, you know, I think the second thing again is I think there's just a tremendous amount of denialism going on in the leadership, like for years and years and years, like they must've known were they not shown the, the perversion files. Um, The guy who's supposed to be running the perversion files that it wasn't shown the perversion files. So probably not. Yeah. So maybe, maybe not, but I think the fact that it's so decentralized can allow headquarters to say, oh, you know, that's messed up, but it doesn't, you know, it's just this town here or it's this town there or whatever. Like we have a certain amount of responsibility, but for the most part, we're giving handbooks and outfits and and a curriculum more or less to these places. And then they've got to kind of do it themselves. So I think they can kind of uh, convince themselves that it's not like the larger model, that it's these individual things that are happening and not be introspective enough to say, you know, if it's happening frequently, like maybe there's something wrong with what we're doing that's allowing this to happen, especially for a a, a thing like the Boy Scouts, which is basically just selling an image that any chink in that they could see as sort of an existential threat to their organization. So I think it's one of those you know, we can't give an inch on this rather than we have this problem. Let's address it in sort of a a thoughtful, comprehensive way and move forward. I mean, I think, and it may be true that they think that that's the kind of thing that tarnishes their image enough that they're, they're no longer viable or at least in the way they are now. So Kevin, there were some pretty uh, startling cases and, and startling victims that we heard from in this documentary. Yeah, there were there were and and they were all sorts of ages because this goes back decades and decades. So you have a couple people like in their their 50s. And I think the youngest one that they spoke to is Tim Crummins. And I thought that his story was just particularly heart wrenching as he was assaulting me. He kept saying, you're nothing and you're never going to be nothing. That shame became mine and it's still there. And when something goes wrong, it confirms In my mind, what I have always known to be true, I am nothing and I'm never going to be nothing. That's what the assault did. Maybe it's because he's the youngest and this is all like really fresh, but like his abuser really found a way to ratchet up the trauma with his berating him during the abuse like that. But I thought that his story about like smashing the scouting award that his father got, smashing it. And then gluing it back together and then like sometimes smashing it again, putting it back together. I mean, it's like you can't write that kind of symbolism. Uh, You know, you you would consider it way too corny in a novel. But here it's just it's again, it's just so moving. He's trying to work through this stuff and, you know, he's really trying to put his own pieces back together. You know, it's funny. um, Before we started talking about this, I, you know, I I didn't want to be like. I actually looked up Girl Scouts and like and like sex abuse stuff. And mm-hmm. I found a bunch of cases of Girl Scouts with sex abuse cases, most of which were uh, against male um, troop leaders, mm-hmm. interestingly. Okay. Um, but there's actually a page on the Girl Scouts website that says you have to talk to your girl about physical and sexual abuse. Here's how the Girl Scouts have, I guess, proactively taken this stance um, about talking to kids about sex abuse and like they've, they've actually made they that part of their brand. they say kids supposed to report to? Well, the website says, Kevin, secrets shouldn't be kept. Some secrets shouldn't be kept. Tell your girl that anyone asking you to keep a secret uh, is a red flag for any adult to ask a child to keep information from your parents. 
basically, um, I mean, really, this is all about not keeping secrets. So it doesn't necessarily sure. say who you report to, but yeah, but it I doesn't just, encourage anybody to go to the listen. Police, I'm not right? saying the Girl Scouts are perfect, but there's a ton of articles about how cookies are a racket. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and not a huge amount of articles about this. Yeah. And look, their lawyer is correct that this yeah. does happen in virtually no. I'm going to say every youth organization, yes, or any place that you have, you don't have to <laughs> need a week to take children into the woods by themselves to find a way to prey on them, but to just say, yeah, it also happened here, it happened there, and we're just the ones with the deep pockets. It's kind of like fuck you, man. Yeah, that's like you're really minimizing. Your role in it by just saying, oh, well, you know, we're the ones with the deep pockets. And so they're coming after us. I want to give Laura the last word on something. Yeah. Boy Scouts of America General Counsel, Laura, what was your impression of him? Um, I think he comes across as kind of a dick. Agreed. Uh, Sorry. (laughs) Nope. I think that's Um, fine. (laughs) I I think that's basically uh, he just deflects. He offers different explanations. You know, I, I, I said I quoted him earlier. If we had a problem, our society had a problem. Uh, the Boy Scouts did not abuse these kids. We had some bad people who got in. At this point in the game, the deflecting, like, we're past that, okay? Now we're in the making amends, doing the right thing, admitting what happened, making compensation available to the victims. Like, we're not still in this, like, well, maybe it happened. So I, I think he just came across as a dick. At Staples Business Advantage, our experts can help you find furniture that fits any design and budget, while AI can recommend products based on preferences, generate 3D models for visualization, and optimize space planning for office furniture. Take advantage of our team's eye for style and design. And my eye for, wait, I have no eyes, only algorithms. Let Staples Business Advantage use today's latest innovations plus our team's experience to make furnishing an office space easier for you. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human. I want people to understand this ordeal. It's taken a toll on both of us. Casey Anthony's parents respond after 15 years of allegations. I've gotten blamed for something I didn't do and it tears me up inside. This can change our life. This is serious. This is their final response. The test is about to begin. Please remain still. Casey Anthony's parents. The lie detector test. Watch now. Only on A and E, and watch next day on the A and E app. Luxury is meant to be livable. Discover the new leather collection at Ashley with premium quality leather sofas, recliners, and more, all built to last. No matter how many spills, scuffs, or pet-related mishaps come its way, the leather collection at Ashley is made with the durability you need for the whole family. Shop the new leather collection at Ashley and find chairs starting at $499.99 and sofas at $599.99. Ashley, for the love of home. All right, let's do what we do. Let's let our listeners know, should they check out Scouts Honor, The Secret Files of the Boy Scouts of America? It's a documentary on Netflix. What do you think, Laura Breaker? Thumbs up or thumbs down for this documentary? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go thumbs up with this. Um, I, you know, this was actually short as far as documentaries and shows go that we watch. And often I am like, oh, I'm great. It was short. Um, in this case, it could have probably been longer, but I still feel like it got the job done in terms of covering the history of the perversion files, the abuse, how it came to the surface, and just, you know, setting up that this was, you know, something uh, that was going on for over 100 years. And they had some of the victims in this documentary who really told very compelling stories about their experiences. And I think this was very well done. Um, It does, like I said, make me sad. My son was a scout and he had a great scouting experience. And it's It's sad to know that this institution is so flawed that other people did not have that experience and that it's just, it's really, really unfortunate what happened uh, and really heartbreaking to uh, so many boys that we hear about in this documentary. Toby Ball, what do you think? Thumbs up or thumbs down for Scout's Honor? Yeah, I'm a thumbs up. I, I think it, it's it's an important topic. I think they do a very sort of good systematic job of exposing it, uh, talking about the history and giving some, in addition to sort of like institutional history, also giving uh, some case histories and focusing on, you know, a small handful of people and their different roles. You know, I think they could have dove in a little bit more about, you know, sort of the culture and what the Boy Scouts really represent in this, in this day and age. 
you know, if they represent anything and, and sort of why um, they, they do talk about this sort of backlash against the people who are trying to expose things and, and maybe jumped into that a little bit more, but you know, as for what they do have, uh, yeah, I thought, I thought it was, I thought it was very good. So, uh, a good thumbs up. Kevin Flynn. Yeah. Uh, I'm a thumbs up. This is excellent. Um, I was a boy scout. This was not my experience, but, um, growing up in this world and living today, not surprised at all. But what was surprising about this particular case, um, it's not the numbers of people. Oh, that is really, really incredible. It's the fact, as you say in the title here, that the scouts kept, files on all of the people it could find out who were predators and instances of crimes being committed and they just kept them and didn't do anything with them and especially for an organization that sort of touts itself as you know doing a good turn daily and doing things that are right and morally good they completely failed in this case and so i thought it was great they had some really powerful interviews with survivors they gave the scouts a chance to tell their side of it you know, they they took the opportunity. I don't know how well they afforded themselves, but you can certainly see that this is a, a topic that is worth uh, exploring because, you know, the Boy Scouts, in a way, financially may get away with this in the sense that they just declare bankruptcy. There's nothing left for the survivors. They become creditors and not survivors. So in any event, this was an eye opening documentary. Thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs up for me, too. I'll talk less about the documentary than about the Boy Scouts. 82,000 victims are the victims that have come forward in this lawsuit, right? This story, though, it's it's not over for these people, but it's over in the public eye. Because, like, right after this happened, there's other news about the Boy Scouts. Oh, we're letting in girls now. We're letting in other kids now. And it's like, they're very, very good at, like, sort of preserving the sanctity of the brand. It's largely been forgotten in the public eye, and it should not be. I will just say, whether you're a parent or just a person in the world— any brand or organization that claims that it's about moral goodness, just like run, run, man, just run. And things that are actually good are messy. They don't claim to be perfect. Anything that is actually good never claims to be perfect, ever, 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 ever. That is a lesson to take away from this. Things that are good do not claim morality and they do not claim to be perfect. The Boy Scouts is a fantastic example of that. So I'm going to say about that, big thumbs up for me for Scouts Honor. I really think the documentary is great. I think everybody should watch it, whether you're a parent or not, whether you have scouting experience or not. I think it's just super duper good. It's a great investigation. It's revelatory and new facts emerge. That's it for me. Big thumbs up for Scouts Honor. That's going to do it for us. But before we go, Laura Bricker, do we have a cat of the week this week? <laughs> We do, but it is not a cat. What kind of animal is it? It is a bunny. Ooh, I love bunnies. And this bunny is named Chloe. And this uh, came from Jen, and I hope I don't butcher your name, B-A-K-K-E. Baki? Back. Baki? Baki? Jen Baki, longtime New Hampshire listener. Uh, Jen saw a post from a woman a few weeks ago in her one of her local social medias asking if anyone in the Rochester, Barrington, Gonic area was missing a gray lop-eared rabbit that was hanging out in her yard. No one responded. She had cats, no clue how to care for a rabbit, and she had just had surgery, so she just kind of let this rabbit go in and out of her garage until Jen went to the rescue. And it was a longtime free-range-in-the-house rabbit owner reached out and went over and picked up the rabbit. Uh, she called the police. Nobody had reported this bunny missing, and it just hopped right in Jen's pet carrier. And Jen already has one in-home free-range pet rabbit who was neutered. Couldn't tell if this was male, female, went to the vet, uh, found out it is a girl bunny. And so welcome to the house, Chloe. They have a gender reveal party for the rabbit? They did. They did have a gender reveal, and they didn't set off any titanium or um, explode anything like that other New Hampshire. Is bunny gender a construct, though? That's the question. It's just a construct, yeah. (laughs) You know who else is a a gender free roaming uh, bunny in the house person is my sister, Jen, in New York. Oh. She's a free roaming bunny in the apartment person, which is one of her bunnies is like blind. So, like, it's always like hopping into the sofa and stuff. 
<laughs> it's very funny. It's funny to me. I don't think it's funny to my sister, That's, but it's funny. Oh, to me. that poor bunny. Well, what also, a great life. Uh, Isn't that poor bunny? She's got a great life. Yeah, and this is Chloe is very cute. There's a beautiful picture of Chloe out in the garden. Also, Chloe loves to eat from the garden and is super great about using her litter box. So I don't know. It kind of makes me want to have a bunny, but I think my cats would probably try to eat a bunny. Uh, Jen, good job. They're pretty big. You can get a big one and that's bigger than your cats. Just FYI. Mm -hmm. Okay, Laura Bricker, folks want to reach out to you and send photos of their unusual animals to you, whether they be free range or not. How can they find you on social media? They can find me at Laura Bricker on Twitter. Toby Ball, what about you? How can you be found? At Toby Ball NH. Kevin Flynn, what about you? I'm a Kevin P. Flynn. And if you want to reach me anywhere and tell me that I'm wrong about the Boy Scouts or any other institution claiming morality, you can find me everywhere at Reb Lavoie. You can also find the show everywhere at Crime Writers On. But I really do encourage you to join our incredible Facebook group. Just go to Facebook. You'll find our page. Hit join the group. If you know any of our names, we'll let you into our group. I'm just going to make this quick pitch for our group, Kevin. I know I belong to a lot of Facebook groups. Our group is the best one on Facebook. Agreed. It's healthy. There are no jerks. The discussions are great. People are supportive. It's just the best. People there are awesome. Get episodes early and ad-free at patreon.com slash partners in crime media. You'll also get the Crime Writers on After Show, Married with Podcast, Laura Bricker's Leave it to Bricker Podcast, and Toby Ball's Deep Dive Book Club Podcast. We're on YouTube, too. Our theme song was composed and performed by Ty Gibbons. Our line editor is the wonderful Livy Burdett. The executive producer of this program is Kevin Flynn. The show was recorded in the Treehouse Yoga Studio above the Mockingbird Cafe in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi Studio, otherwise known as Studio C, the closet in our New Hampshire basement where Kevin remains unsuccessful in teaching me the difference between a square knot and a double clove hitch. On behalf of all the crime writers, over thanks so much for under listening. And through. We will catch you later. Right over left, left over right. The latest book is called under the fucking hell I have to look it up every time burden of the yeah I'm always like beneath underneath uh, yeah, well, under uh, a ruthless sorry, sun let's... beneath a ruthless yeah. sun yeah it's called yeah partners in, in crime, crime media, media. At Staples Business Advantage, our experts can help you find furniture that fits any design and budget, while AI can recommend products based on preferences, generate 3D models for visualization, and optimize space planning for office furniture. Take advantage of our team's eye for style and design. And my eye for, wait, I have no eyes, only algorithms. At Staples Business Advantage, furnishing your office is easy, and with the best warranty in the business, we're committed to you now and down the road. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human.